You know what the problem with Elbar is? You know, he thinks he's the hero in his own story. Don't get me wrong. I would love, I mean, really love to just settle down maybe. Yeah, I'm not talking about kids, but eh, lucrative business, you know, finally enjoy the pleasures of life. But, I mean, every time there's some sort of, and speak of the devil. Welcome back for another episode of Errant Adventures, the solo actual play podcast where stories are told at the speed of dice. With me, Steve Morrison, your game master and solo player. Now come on, let's grab the dice and see where our story goes. Tess, are you ready yet? Yeah, I was just talking to my friend over here, and the squirrel hops away, and Taz looks out on what may be... A frosty morning falling at either side of winter. Uh, not really sure if he wants to head back to Frostcrag, but sure enough, Buddy Elvar will lead him somewhere. Well, let's get our journey underway. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I, I tried to get as much supply as possible. Kind of rolls around his pack a little bit, pulls out some rope. We lost some of this, and he pulls out some more canvas or tarping. <sighs> Horses, man. Just... I can't, for the love of me, like, ox everywhere. Horses? You tell me where they are in this town. I have not seen any horses since we came to Woodwatch. Bullshit. There are horses everywhere, and nobody will sell one. Anyway, all right. Weed. Uh, And at this point, Taz is kind of frustrated. Last time we talked, uh, he was not very successful in uh, securing. He he, he bit off more than he could chew uh, and struck out in finding any sort of uh, assistance to travel. Even so, we do have five supplies, so we, we did re- replenish our supplies, we just don't have any horses. Yeah, that, that was a, a hit on the, the old momentum. Yes. I think uh, Taz is temperamental, uh, I think I've discovered, really? I've discovered that uh, as we've played, uh, that uh, Taz is a little bit uh, moody, so he's going to be a little bit sullen, uh, you scared off his friend that he was talking to, so. Uh, Elvar does that. <laughs> So Elvar, who has still bandages wrapped around his oh, ribs, because he's still hurt. I mean, he's he's sitting at three health. Mm. Uh, he is going to look out on that uh, frosty morning as well. And we are going to undertake a journey to our old home of Frostcrag. Uh, we think this is going to be a troublesome journey because Frostcrag is not too far away from Woodwatch. Uh, both are in the hinterlands. Frostcrag is a little bit closer to the Tempest Hills than Woodwatch is. So we are going to be heading sort of up in elevation, which makes sense with the name Frostcrag. Mm-hmm. And uh, we are going to get underway. And apparently Elvar is leading this journey. Yeah, it's our hometown. Yeah. Should, should be no problem. Should be no problem. So once again, this is a troublesome <laughs> journey and we are underway with wits so i've got a wits of two okay so here we go how is that possible three I'm just asking how is that possible uh so i've got three on the action die i've got a six and a nine on the challenge dice for a miss so you know continuing my streak from last episode without fail <laughs> on a miss you are waylaid by a perilous <laughs> event pay the price oh geez well we didn't uh, want to go there anyway, did we? No. Not really. <laughs> okay, so let's roll pay the price. Uh, a surprising development complicates your quest. So what could this be? Because we have a few outstanding threads. More recently, we've got Mori and the Mercenary that Elvar defeated last episode in a single combat. And uh, subsequently... The mercenary was exiled from Shieldfall and may or may not have it out for Elvar. Taz also infuriated the new mayor of Shieldfall, uh, Valeri. 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 I should probably write that down. Yes. And Valeri has potentially put out a hit on Taz because of his knowing Valeri having some sort of conflict with Mori and the mercenary. We also, from our days past, still have an open thread where we had some, like, bandits that we defeated. 
Yep. We we did something. We also have a past in Frostcrag. We do have a past S- in Frostcrag. Specifically. And yes. Not a pleasant one. Not a pleasant one at all. But instead of the dark, mysterious man having one ward, he had multiple wards in an orphanage. Uh, and dark, mysterious man was uh, truly a bad guy. Yeah. Who's no longer there. Yep. He's moved on to some somewhere else. But who knows? But who knows? Who's left? So what do we think of this surprising development is? Do we want to roll on <sighs> yeah, action? Let's ask, let's, uh, let's ask the Oracle just right. to, to focus our... So we got 50 on our action, which is transform. transform. And our theme is 14. Transform duty. Hmm. So changing your or our <laughs> oath uh, or quest. I mean, transform duty could be Morian the mercenary because we certainly transformed his duty. <laughs> D U T Y. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, who knows? <laughs> Elvar. Elvar. After getting whooped pretty bad, bested him. It did best him. I mean, yeah. If that's who we want to go with. <sighs> I don't know. Duty feels more like a guard, changing their path. So okay. Whether it is. I was thinking of our duty, so transforming the duty, yeah. and it's 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 a perilous uh, intersection. Or you know, we're trying to actually not go to Frostcrag. We're trying to go to a cave. Yeah. So I mean, at this point, maybe we were soldiering out for you know the day or getting co- towards evening, and uh, I mean, this is a loose interpretation, but it could be that where we're trying to get to is now inaccessible, impassable. Okay. So what if it is you know the first the first grasps of winter and there's, you know, there was some sort of snowstorm. (laughs) (laughs) We're not really in the mountain. No, we're not quite yet, but there's some sort of snowstorm that has made the path impassable. And because of that kind of looking at the map, maybe we have to, because we we were following like basically a a goat trail or, or something like that. That is a, for all intents and purposes, a road leading towards Frostcrag. Yeah, like day two or something like that. Frostcrag yeah. is probably like a few days away. Yeah, and so that's now impassable, and so we have to go off-road and trudge through. I think I think it's going to increase our journey difficulty. Yeah, of course it does. Yeah, so I think it is going to make this now, instead of a troublesome journey, it's just going to upgrade it to dangerous. Dangerous. Just not formidable. Right. That's when we fail again, and then we have to start ice climbing. Yes. Tool. Yep. <laughs> oh, no, let's not do that. Uh, you know, it doesn't take a person to kill us. Just terrible mountaineering skills. Just terrible mountaineering <laughs> skills. Exactly. After a few hours, sort of trudging vaguely sort of north, maybe uh, northwest a little bit, circumventing around maybe even heading basically towards the Tempest Hills, and then we're going to cut across over to where Frostcrag is. Elvar will continuing to uh, lead. We're probably bickering like old women, like, oh, no, absolutely. this is definitely the path. No, yeah. I remember when I was 10, this is where we went to. Yes. <laughs> and like uh, hopefully this goes better. Hey, that's better. I've got eight on the action die, a six and a four on the challenge dice for a strong yeah, hit. Strong so... Hit. We reach a waypoint. If the waypoint is unknown to us, envision it. I'm going to say we come in from the north to this cave area Mm -hmm. because of, you know, we had to sort of a penalty. This seems like we, you know, we miss and then hit. We've we've got to have, it's not a complication, but we're coming in from a weird angle. Yeah. From from the top going down. So I think to like a little veil. We are a little bit more in the mountains in that those first... I guess they're not really mountains, but those first sort of hills. craggy hills mm-hmm. of the Tempest Hills. And we are sort of making our way along. And because we got a strong hit, we can mark progress or we can suffer minus one supply and mark progress. And I can take plus one momentum. Sure. Let's do that. Let's say we're actually using the brand new rope that uh, Taz secured. Cool. You get a momentum. I feel like. I like that. that. Feels takes me to six momentum, and our supply goes down to four. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you want Elvar to continue leading the way through? He's doing such a great job. All right. <laughs> this time we've got a four on the action die, a five, and a seven on the challenge dice for another miss. You do, is that with your wits? Yeah, 
That's a two. Oh. Plus two. Oh, bummer. It's not great. No, it's not uh, great. And now, because we gave us, uh, gave me that extra <laughs> momentum, <laughs> I have enough momentum to burn the momentum and get a weak hit. Wow. So I'm going to do that. Like it was meant to be. It was meant to be. So on a weak hit, we can reach a waypoint and mark progress, but suffer minus one supply. So our supply goes down to three, but we mark another waypoint. Yeah, we're rappelling down. We use the rope. There's some slippage. You know, one of us almost dies. <clears throat> Elvar. And <laughs> we get down, but we lose our rope. Uh, it's a little harried. Elvar, just through sheer grit and will and determination, you know, catches himself as he slips like 10 feet and yeah. cut hands and we're oh, yeah. there. And we're there. So 35 on the location description is occupied <laughs> for the waypoint. Of course it is. So is it occupied by humans or is no. it occupied by like animals? Yes. Okay. What kind of animals? Now, remember, this is this is a, like a minor complication. It's not even something that we necessarily have to deal with. We are we already lost so, our supply. So this is the difference between like a grizzly bear and raccoons. Yeah, I mean, this is <laughs> exactly <laughs> okay. This is more for flavor than it is for some sort of like thing that we have to overcome. Yeah. So flavor is uh, well used by animals. Yeah. So there's a certain aroma. Yeah. And we're just like, ah, by the gods, <laughs> do we have gods in the setting? I don't, we We've never, we never went it. through the setting truths. So do we have gods in this setting? Uh, we could be agnostic about it and say yes and no. Okay. I think Elvar believes in. That's more ambivalent. Maybe, maybe Elvar says something like. Yeah. He, he believes, he in, believes in the Elvis gods. Yeah. Of course we talked, he does. I think we talked about this last yes, time. And Taz, Taz yeah. has ridiculed him. Taz does not believe in sure. gods. So yeah, Elvar is like, by the gods, what is that smell? Well. That's your God's handiwork. It's pretty terrible. Um, and he starts kicking around like <laughs> bones and sh- shit and all this other crap lying around. So yeah, pulls up like, you know, like the kerchief part of around his uh, nose and makes his way inward. This is like a little sheltered veil of rocks and things like that. And we don't know what animal it may be. Um, let's just say there's a lot of refuse and, and waste and whatnot. Yeah. I'm trying to pick our way through. We don't linger there for long. No. Okay. Got it. Cool. Got it. Uh, do you want yes elvar taz to is now taking taking over okay. he's just he's moving forward <laughs> with the mention of elvar's elvish gods he's, he's <laughs> had like, enough let me let me do this so this is plus widths sweet oh shiza um that is only a four for my action die oh. versus a nine and a seven. Oh no he's he's thrown off <laughs> gods and animal crap lying around oh it's terrible Couldn't find horses and get to make our way around with God's forsaken valley. <laughs> Wonder what gods? What gods are they, Elvar? He's not even paying attention now. No. Name them. <laughs> Taz definitely does not want to go to Frostcrag. He's like, oh, let's go this way. You know? Exactly. <laughs> Fortunately, the cave isn't there in Frostcrag. It's just, you know, adjacent. Exactly. So we're gonna pay the price again. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's see what it is. So moody, distracted, grumbling Taz. A new danger or foe yeah. is revealed. Maybe it's the actual animals that live there and that they're predators. <laughs> Are they <laughs> literally what's into, you know, saber tooth tiger? I don't know what. And we probably would have known what's around these areas. And there's yeah. probably some heavy duty predators. I mean, like wolves cats and wolves and bears. Yeah. Large cats. Do we want to say wolves? Wolves. Yeah. This sounds yeah. like a great, like, yeah, we're in a wolf den. Okay. So we stumbled in a wolf den and st- <laughs> Taz's head's turned and then he hears a growl and turns around. Oh, shite. Oh, there's a wolf. <laughs> there's there. wolf. Hi, doggy. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, so... What happens when you walk into a wolf den? Do you know? Uh, S- we're about to find <laughs> out. I have a spear, which I think is good for fighting wolves. Magical elvish dagger. Yep. Are we going to try and avoid these wolves? Because, like, just because a new foe is revealed doesn't mean we have to, like, get into a fight with them. Should we try to just hoof it and run? And if we fail on that face danger, then then we have to fight them? I can't honestly say we're gonna outrun a dog i mean a wolf i mean sure. I, I, physically that's that's impossible we could c- climb our way around right right yeah because we're in kind of like a craggy veil area so yeah taz oh nice nice wolfie <laughs> backing away didn't mean anything looking over at elvar i think elvar is going to uh take the lead on rolling this face danger because i think what he does is he steps up with the spear and is like taz get up that wall and he's like holding okay. them off with the spear thinking that maybe you can get up there and then like 
throw down pull some rocks or something and like yeah. throw down something at least to give him sure, time. scare him away oh that's a good idea so this is going to be we're going to envision elvar saying that like get up there and start throwing some rocks exactly so <laughs> this is going to be plus iron give, for elvar give me some space too which he's good for yeah, 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 yeah. five on the action die two fours <gasps> on the challenge dice two for fours. a strong hit with something special with an opportunity give it like a little sound effect for that like a do 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 <laughs> I was thinking more like sparkles. Oh. <laughs> like <a> chimes. <laughs> All right. Opportunity. So uh, what is your opportunity? Uh, well, that's a good question. So we get away from the wolves. That's the strong hit. Mm-hmm. Um, but as far as an it, opportunity goes. It looks like we've practiced this. You spear, keep it away. I climb up, scare, you know, wolf away with rock, you know, yeah. lend a hand. You Like, it's clockwork. Yeah, we've probably run across some wolves in our time playing in the woods around frost crag before yeah well let's see uh action and subject for and we didn't have to kill it and we didn't have to kill it so we got 77 for action secure and the theme is another oh no this is 17 hmm. uh, i can't read these dice that well uh it's secure 17 now, re-roll that secure one. renown nobody's here has got the wolf once the wolf tells the other wolves maybe that, like, <laughs> All the wolves in the land <laughs> bow down before Taz and Elva. <laughs> so you joke. <laughs> is that a thing? But what if the secure renown is that we don't have to worry about coming across any more wolves on the rest of this journey? Like they mm. steer clear of our scent. Nah, it still seems weird. All right. Rerolling the theme. 33, which is. Secure peace. Okay, fine. <laughs> the table will not let me. <laughs> <laughs> the oracle has spoken. <laughs> All right, I get it. Yep. So we don't have to worry about coming across wolves on the rest of our journey. Wolf friend. Oh, Elvar wolf friend. <gasps> Ooh. You've got a new nickname. I like that. All right, add it to the list. Elvar. Well, this is the start of the list. I don't think we've started giving you nicknames. I don't I think, think so. I think Taz is going to start doing this. I, I like Elvar wolf friend. Yep. Yep. All right. So Taz, maybe Taz is going to become a bard. Who knows? Who knows? Most grumpy bard. <laughs> in the the yeah, Iron you know. Lands. What do we call this place? It is the Iron Lands. All right. So uh, we have. That's how Taz starts off. It's like, what do we call this place? Iron Lands. <laughs> yeah. So I think uh, Taz is still in the lead since Elvar <laughs> uh, was, you know, on the bottom. Can you follow up your miss with a strong hit? We'll find out. All right. All right, wolf friend. Wolf friend, it has a certain ring to it. Um, I have a nine on my action die, and then challenge is four and a six. So heck yeah, I can just run that. Bad so boy. you take a momentum. Yes. Uh, or actually, before you take a momentum, do we want to burn a supply to mark progress and give you a momentum? It feels appropriate since we're okay. climbing. Like yeah, we're hurting our supply, but yeah. I think that's we're using ropes and so we're down to two supply. But you get a momentum off of that, and we're now at six boxes of progress. I've got six momentum. <gasps> So here's the question. We could try to reach Frostcrag now, reach this cave, cave, if we feel like we're close enough, or do we want to try to make one more one more leg of the journey? Yeah, one more leg. All right. I, I feel like we, we're coming, we're in that veil like above the cave, we're trying to repel in. Yep. Wasn't supposed to be this hard, but that first roll. We, we got off the road a little. Is that a 10? If it's a zero, it's a 10. Mm. Even with my momentum, I can't do it because my challenge die are seven and 10. Ooh. And even with my plus three, I have a six. Okay. So another miss. I'm pretty sure. Just fall, please. (laughs) It's really funny because I feel like I did miss, strong hit, miss. And then, you know, I was able to burn momentum to get a weak hit. And then you did miss, strong hit, miss. Yeah, but I don't have the momentum. But you don't have the momentum. But it's just, it's funny to me. There you go. One of those journeys. One of those journeys. One so of those, one of those days. Taz is, he was really, you know, he feel good, wolf friend, they're repelling down, getting a little cocky. You're not going to like this. Yeah. Well, maybe I'll love it. The pay the price is it forces you to act against your best intentions. I think we have to go into the village. Like, I don't think we can get. Oh, it's physically impossible. Okay. So this is, yeah, no, no perfect. Perfect. We're at a point where we actually see a path. That leads straight down into Frostcrag. Yeah. 
And it's what you would take coming up to this cave area. But because of some previous rolls, let's say it's, yeah, it's snowy, rock falls. It's impassable. We had to find another means to get to this, maybe resupply, taking our journey from the south. Yeah, is, uh, love it. Is there an entrance in Frostcrag? And like, you know, there's this like cave system that runs under the village. Maybe that's a legend. It's lore. So okay. maybe, you know, we've got options. Either try to, to resupply and come in from the south. Maybe we're we're giving up a little bit. Yeah. Um, we're just too far off. It was supposed to be an easy. Well, it wasn't easy. The journey's not easy. It was just treacherous. It's never easy. Nothing <laughs> like, Nothing in the Ironlands is ever We're going to walk three days and just go to the cave. No problem. Nope. Avalanches and wolves and impassable. <laughs> I also think that because we have to go into the village, we have to resolve the journey now. Yep. And so we're at six progress, and we got to roll the challenge dice against that. Do you want to, or you want me to? Oh, this is a good time to switch. You know, give it back to you. I think <laughs> at this point, like Taz is again getting a little grumpy and frustrated. Yeah. And we see the path back, and Taz keeps looking down. Like it's a pretty clear shot down. You know, maybe. A Three or four hours down in Tarasca, you can see it from this vantage point. Yeah. I think I think Taz keeps trying to find a way. And Alvar's... Bloody hands, he's bruised, yeah. there's a cut in his cheek. Alvar's finally like, my friend, we have to go to the village. We can't make it to the cave this way. I and know... That's when you bring up, like, the lore. Remember yeah. the, the secrets, like, through the sewers? You know, there's, uh, there's other, you know... Apparently, you know, this was uh, a stronghold for the elves way back when. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so he's like, I know you don't want to go into Frostcrag, but we have to. We have to go. There's a muttering of some sort of obscenity under his breath. All right. <laughs> you just don't pick it up. And here are the challenge dice against our progress of six. Okay. I've got a five and an eight on the hey. challenge dice. So a weak hit. Weak hit. That's about appropriate. That's, you know what? I will take it. So on Reach Your Destination... I can spend that much time not getting somewhere. It's hard. <laughs> in a different gaming system, Steve, we'd have been there. In a different gaming system, we could have just been like, we arrive. <laughs> I think there's probably an argument to be made that we could have just said that anyways, because Frostcrag is our like hometown. But yeah. it's more fun this way. It is much more fun that way. So on a weak hit, you arrive but face an unforeseen hazard or complication. Oh, they know who we are. Come on. It's got to be... But, like, I don't think we necessarily have any ill will. Like, the, the village doesn't necessarily have any True. ill will right, against us. Historical. Of course, it's going to it's gonna roll, enough. like, you know, people hate or something <laughs> like that. And we're going to be like, ah, okay, maybe right. we do have some ill will in the village. All right, so action. Do you want to roll them? Oh, yeah. Let's, yeah. Let's, I'll, I'll, I'll do this now. Yeah. Since I've been rolling the oracles. Um, 63. 63. Challenge. Okay. It's a good start. Um, 99. Challenge strategy. Challenge well, our strategy. only strategy right now is how to get into the gaming system. It is. I think <laughs> since we're visiting Frostcrag, do we need to, for like for the first time in our adventures, do we need to get a sense of what's going on in Frostcrag? Because there's the settlement trouble table that we could roll on to see oh. if there's something going on. So the, yeah, the, just getting into the town maybe oh, it could uh, challenge our our our, our plan B. Yeah. <gasps> Additional plans. Yeah. Uh, so do you want to roll a percentile on right. the settlement trouble? B and Elvish is. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I feel like eventually Taz is going to be fluent and <laughs> Elvish and Elvish and is not. And is not. <laughs> exactly. No, that's perfect. Taz is going to know Elvish. He's going to know the Elvish gods. Yep. Oh, and Alvar just you is, need me. is in this stubborn, you know, mindset that he's I can't hold a spear. <laughs> I, mean, I was like, who? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a nine. Nine. All right. Straight up nine. Old wounds reopened. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> they do know us. Do I remember something about the orphanage burning down or something like that? Or that am was I in just, your mind. Am I just imagining that? No, that's a great segue, though. But like, Let's not roll on that. Let's just like, say that happened. Why did we leave? I mean, obviously, there was this... Did we leave before the I, there, overseer of this... I think there was a falling out. I think it had to have been that way. Like, you know, for all intents and purposes, I think we talked about this last time. We were used essentially as a thieves guild, yeah, like, a, an orphanage, yeah. kids like you know pickpockets, like yeah. the good old, you know Victorian era, you know 
if, if you're not going to be in the mines crawling through shafts, you're going to be picking pockets and stealing crap and whatnot. And, yeah. And so he was a, he was a, the, I, we have it written down somewhere, but the man who ran the orphanage and probably had a retinue of sycophants and, and evildoers and whatnot, put on a good show to the public, right? He's politically connected. At this point, he is a well-to-do, I think, something like a constable or uh, a man of power uh, further south in the havens at this point has gotten up in the world. So at this point, I think, uh, I think what happened is that there was a, an eventual coming to a head. You, me, maybe some other people, other kids, you know, at, at some point you get old enough, right? Right. You become into your teen years and whatnot, and you're a little more unruly and not as useful. So I think at that point he was done with us, but we weren't done with him realizing that we were, did he like used frame us for something or, or, you know, in some way, turn the villagers against. I don't us. want to keep asking the oracle, but that might be a great oracle question. Okay. Of what he did. I think this is. Just... Let's just straight up ask the oracle. Do we think that he turned the vi- the villagers against us? Is it almost certain? Likely fifty fifty. It's almost certain. Almost certain. All right. So eleven or greater. Okay. Is going to be a yes. He rolls a two. I th- almost thought. Almost. Uh, it is a zero. 20. It's a 20. Uh, so, Close. yes. Yes. I mean, that's how it's always happened, right? Yeah. You know, he's either they peacefully go and we were malcontents. So he unpeacefully tried to kick us out. And then there was a fight. But let's not ask. Let's, let's, we'll, we'll, we'll direct this. Yeah. Yeah. The orphanage ended up burning down. Mm-hmm. There was a big fight. You know, we snuck out or left. There was some, you know, carnage and mayhem, maybe some death. Yeah. We don't know what happened. That's why we've never been back. Yeah. You know, we were starting to get a bad reputation at that point, and he was framing us as bad eggs. Because this is a complication, <laughs> right? But it's not necessarily something that we have to deal with immediately. Yeah. I think we approach the village, and it sounds like, considering there was an orphanage and a thieves' guild sort of situation, yeah. that this is a, a fairly sizable village mm-hmm. in this area. I'd say it's, it's, it's the... The, the capital of this region sure so it's a decent it's a decent size. size so i think elvar and taz you know maybe elvar like pulls his hood up over his head and we're going to try and be subtle about our business in the village and not reveal who we are and uh, and then if we get any further complications, then maybe somebody recognizes us. Okay, I, I like that. And I, let's say that based on where it's at, it's central. It's right at the bottom of the Tempest Hills. It's probably the first large settlement of decent size that pulls in all the like mining. Yeah, material. So this is a mi- it's a mining capital. Perfect. Tough people. Yeah. So we are now in Frostcrag, mm-hmm. and we've completed our journey. Now we need to find an entrance to this elven cave. Which might be complete bunk. We'll it find it out. might. And I think to do that, we should gather some information. I think that is the appropriate move here. Yeah. And and, and I said it, and we're, let's roll with it. Supposedly, it's linked to the sewer system somehow. Mm-hmm. That there's a secret entrance that underneath the city somewhere. Okay. So it sounds like we're just going to go to the sewers and start looking around. Or are we asking around... <sighs> Would we know who to ask at this point? Like, where would we have learned this lore from? It would have been whispers with all the other boys. And... Yeah. It's somebody somebody in our... This is yeah. a boy's home. I, this orphanage wasn't oh, an orphanage necessarily. It was like a boy's home. Yeah. Air quotes. Like, all the mining accidents that happen, you lose your parents, right? No, yeah. no joke, right? Absolutely. So I think probably one of, you know, one of the boys that was in the home with us maybe had another friend who, you know, was in the sewers and maybe found like an elven brooch or or coin or something. Sure he did. And then it just spiraled out of control from We've there. all had these conversations in the playground in in, in primary school, yeah. grade school. That's yeah, of course that's what of happened. Of course that's what happened. And that was definitely elvish. Yeah. <laughs> Some sort of dwarvish rune. Yeah. Oh, it's an elvish artifact. <laughs> <laughs> all right. But hey, I mean hey, let's go with it. Let's find out. Let us gather some information. Are there dwarves in our in this world? I don't know. I don't know either. We have not determined that. We I, have not. I feel like the way that we're going with the elves having all these underground settlements, it may be that elves and dwarves are essentially the same thing. Same mythical. And yeah. They're the only we've only seen one elf. Yeah. That's, it's not like there are kingdoms of elves somewhere no. that are going around doing stuff. And this elf was hiding 
in a tree fort, basically. Yeah. Underground tree fort. Yeah. And I, I yeah, exactly. I don't think even <laughs> the people who lived in Woodwatch knew that this elf was there. How do you eat? <laughs> maybe, That's a great question. Maybe he, maybe he doesn't. <laughs> maybe he doesn't. You know, maybe oh, the, the questions I have about them. <laughs> maybe the mausoleum sustains the guardian. Maybe. Wow. We yeah. don't even know who we're helping, Elvar. We really don't. Taz is having this conversation yeah. out loud. <laughs> Don't, don't use my <laughs> how name. Did, how did he eat? It makes no sense. It's like hundreds of years and he's underground. I mean, he did look very pale. Well, that would make sense for being underground. But I, I know. I know. I'm just saying. Firstborn are like malnourished, like long lived and full of vitality. Oh, that, and maybe the, maybe the, his spirit. No, that's how they become wraiths. Remember that, that negative power? Like he starts consuming the energy of the tree to stay alive. And then he just vanishes and becomes some sort of malevolent. Oh, that's yeah. No, you're out. No, yeah. I don't think so. That's, so this is the trailing conversation yep. as they're figuring things out. Excellent. Do you want to roll the gather information, or do you want me? Oh to yeah, take no, the no, no, this we're we're feeling good about life. Okay, uh, I'm going to then attempt to assist you on this. So okay, I'm so gonna, we're actually going to talk. We're going to ask around. I think it makes sense to start there. Yeah. So I'm going to roll secure an advantage to assist Taz on this gather information and i'm going to use my wits as i am studying the yeah. the people in the local tavern that we end up in and trying to pick out someone that looks like they would be good to talk to about hidden caves buried underneath the the sewers of the town okay so let's let's say you're helping to point and you know direct things and taz is probably doing the talking yes absolutely we're not dumb people we are not dumb people for a duo yeah just have bad luck. I've got a six on the action die, a seven and an eight on the challenge dice. Does that hurt me? Does that hinder my efforts? So on a miss, you fail or your assumptions betray you. Oh, we're going to guess the wrong people. Pay the price. Are. I'm going to roll this pay the price. Yep. Your action has an unintended effect. Okay. <laughs> uh, so I think, I think it has to be that I point it you to the wrong I, the wrong people we're paying the price and we talked about it we're trying to be undercover yeah this has to be the time where somebody's like hey aren't you the elf guy the guy who always thought was in the yeah elvar you're elvar right that kind of one of those kind of yeah. conversations yeah. and i think elvar <laughs> who has a shadow of one is going to say uh um uh, no no uh i'm not elvar uh, totally who? convincing who <laughs> Yeah, and the short guy, Taz. So maybe he was with us. You know? Maybe, yeah. <laughs> and so I think that's where your gather information is going to determine where we go if it's good or bad. If it's good or bad. Thanks. It could end up being. It could end up okay. But, but I think typically we would not have had a negative consequence. It just we wouldn't have gotten any information. Typically, now there's a definite danger. Yes. I think there is definitely more of a danger now. I, am I using my? Am I using wit? It is wits, yes. Okay, so I have an eight on my action die, nine and a two. So we hit. Yeah. So the information complicates your quest or introduces a new danger. Envision what you discover and take plus one momentum. So you get a momentum. Oh, sweet. More momentum. Yay, um, momentum. I, can, I'm just, I really know what this is going to mean. Um, it's a friendly conversation. He remembers us, but he's a talker. So he's going to start telling people, hey, Taz and Elvar are back. Yeah. Which? And it's going to start with, you know, friends, yeah. and then it's going to start with, uh, it's going to move to people who are not necessarily our friends. All right. So uh, we have, uh, we try to press upon it that needs to be secret. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's this guy's name? That's a great question. Let us roll on the Oracle. Do you want to roll percentile dice while I pull up sure. our names? Um, I'm thinking we go to an inn. It just happens that Innkeeper is one of those boys home friends that we had. Yeah. S same age-ish kind of. Um, very, very pumped to see us. Uh, and because he's an innkeeper, he's like, I'll be sure to think like, we're like, don't tell anybody. He's like, oh yeah, your secret. We like, this is, he's not going to keep it a secret. Literally, he turns <laughs> around and he's like, guess <laughs> who I saw? Yeah, exactly. yeah. Like, damn it. <laughs> damn it. Who? Number six? Keon? <laughs> oh, Keon. Why, why do you hurt us this way? All right. Uh, so we are going to add Keon to the list of NPCs. The Frost Crag innkeeper. That we grew up with. Do we have so, a name for this? Uh, this inn? This inn. I'm like, Keon the Talker. Oh, I like Keon the Talker. <laughs> That's good. I like, I, I'm, I'm enjoying these uh, epithets <laughs> that we're adding to people. 
Uh, <laughs> like the meeting stone. There's like a big rock in the middle of the the meeting oh, stone. He rebuilt the inn on top of the burnt down boys' home, and he's left some of the rubble there. Oh, <laughs> I like it because you know he's a sun pencil kind of guy. He thought that was pretty, pretty, pretty badass when it happened. <laughs> That's probably why he's so pumped. It's like, yeah, it's a total secret. I sort of named this place because of these guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. So we're kind of hometown heroes. <laughs> to Keown. To Keown. <laughs> oh, boy. So, but we do acquire positive information. Yes. So it seems likely Keown was the one that was bragging about having the Elvish stone. Maybe that's, I mean, it, it makes sense that after an hour or so, we're like, well, oh, Keon's here? Oh, like, he was the guy, like, or he was in that crew of, you know, friends. Maybe they were a grade below or above. Yeah. Whatever. Okay. Out of school, what am I talking about? So, do- <laughs> <laughs> it was child labor thieves guild. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's the same difference. Same yeah. difference. Uh, we were taught things. We were taught things. We've, we've learned some. I, apparently, Elvar <laughs> didn't learn a whole lot of uh, thievery he or deception. found but... a book on Elvish lore when he was eight and it was do- done. Yeah. Which I think this is an interest. Inter- maybe this is only interesting to me, but Elvar. Could like, read. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But also, like, remembers his quote unquote elvish mother. Yeah. And she left at some point. I feel like you're from a well to do family, just ended up there yeah. by circumstance. Well, I think, I think it was probably one of those situations where his, again, quote unquote elven mother, I think we've, we've proved that he does have some connection to the firstborn. He does. But, you know, whether or not his mother is actually a full-blooded elf is yeah. still up for debate. She was but never there. Dad probably she, got sick and died. She, she, like yeah, that. exactly. She left when he was young, but old enough to at least remember her. And then his father passed. Maybe he was, you know, the foreman of one of the mining or an inkeeper, operations. Or, or, or a something. Shop, shop, yeah, as yeah. a person of... Of some means. Yeah, means. And so... Could educate his child... But had no siblings, had no family or anything in the oh, village. An child. And, yes. And <laughs> Elvar ended up at the yeah. orphanage. Taz has siblings. May or may not meet them. We just don't talk about them. <laughs> we just don't talk about them. <laughs> All right. So we know what we're looking for. Is it that we just, we, we now know sort of what sewer to start looking in? Yeah, I'm sure. Cause he's an innkeeper, right? He yeah. hears stories that, yeah, there's some weird stuff in the sewers. We've mm-hmm. had... You know, some people talk about, you know, if they're doing repairs or, you know, there maybe there was just one group that heard of the legend and was exploring. So there is some, there is something to it. Okay. So do we want to then roll something to try and find it? Do we think we need to roll to find it or do we just ask the Oracle? Oh, we're going to ask we the Oracle. It? it sounds like we've completely given up on doing it this the traditional way and just going to the cave itself. Yeah. Okay. Not that I wanted to be blunt about it but i mean well but i think i think <laughs> if we ask the oracle and, and the oracle like, says no, no then okay. we gotta go to the cave yeah, okay. we, we gotta find our way yeah. is there an entrance to this elven ruin in the sewers almost certain likely 50 50 50 50 this has got to be a 50 50 thing right do you want to roll it yeah yeah right. i'm gonna roll it you roll so it. 15 above or 51 and above 51 or greater is a yes mm. 29 <laughs> No, there is not. I think we find maybe a spot where there are some like elven, you know, markings, but it's long, closed off. Yeah, long yeah. destroyed. So we yeah. spend a good portion of a day in the sewer. Yep. We're just going to long story short this. Yep. We stink. We come yep. back to the end. We're going to spend some resources, I guess, staying at the end. Maybe yeah. I'm, you know what? Keon's on the house. I do think. <laughs> Yes, but also seriously, these guys burned down the place. I built this in. <laughs> we get back to the inn, and like it's busier than it seems like it normally yeah. would be. And hello, Taz. People yeah. that we recognize, people who don't recognize, greeting us, yep. shifty eyes, quiet. Yep, countenances on some people. So I guess like where does that leave us? <sighs> are we gonna Are we gonna try and like? slip out in the night or are we going to actually like stay here overnight and see what happens how do we want to handle getting to this cave because we we now know that we have to get to the cave but it's it's blocked it's off in some way yeah so is it going to be another journey to try and get there or i feel like taz would hatch a plan gets into his cups a little bit and says elvar we could use some of this goodwill to get some assistance right i mean okay. somebody knows how to get i feel like this is taz's angle yeah um that would be a shadowy approach, but I think he's helping to make, you know, Elvar has always been the tall, 
generally handsome, you know, kind of popular ish. He was always a good leader. Oh, yeah. uh, maybe not very effective at it, but <laughs> well, the, the, he played the part. <laughs> the, you know, being a good leader really is is bringing people around you who are competent, <laughs> competent and have skill. <laughs> so I feel like this is a, a plan that Taz is hatching right now. Like, there's going to be some blowback on it. Um, I don't know if even, you know Taz is also thinking that it might be dangerous. So I gears think, are turning. I think we should just. Again, long story it. short, it and you Taz should roll a compel. That's why I'm asking you to do it. Taz is putting the seed into Elvar's brain, and you should compel. Okay, then you need to assist. Yep, I'm going to because assist. I have I have nothing when it comes to swindling. Oh, is 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 that part of swindling? So it's shadow. Oh yeah, no, lying. I'm doing it. I was just I was trying to game the system. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, I'm doing it. <laughs> I mean, I, unless we could make the argument that. Taz is assisting with Shadow of like spreading these things, and then Elvar is trying to like charm. So people. that's why I'm asking. I'm trying to help you charm, and then Taz wants to do a solo adventure here in a second. Okay, like you stay here and see if you can get some support. If anybody knows a way in or has a you know a appropriate path, gear, whatever. Okay, physical, actual guide us there. You do that. I want to support. I don't know if I can do this. I want to support you, but then I also want to figure out our emergency escape plan. Plan C. Plan C. If you are assisting me, mm-hmm. uh, how are you doing it? Are you doing it with speed, agility, or precision? Charm, loyalty, or courage? Aggressive action, forceful defense, strength, or endurance? Deception, stealth, or trickery? Expertise, insight, or observation? Expertise. Okay. So he's just giving the... Yeah, roll plus wits. So what it is is Taz is going. Oh, remember so and so. They really like this thing, and like, yeah. like make sure to mention that. I've got to do something. Get us some help. Yeah, because and I'm pointing out really quiet. Well, maybe not quietly at this point. There are some shifty looking people here too. So uh, they're not all friends. Remember that, Elvar. I'm going to see if I can take care of that. All right. Ooh. Um. So I have a nine on my action, and I have a two and a ten. Okay. So we hit. So I get plus one momentum for that. There you go. So not great, but not terrible. Not terrible. Could be a lot worse. Could be a lot worse. So So I'm going to attempt to compel this group of individuals who have gathered in the meeting stone to see the return of Taz and Alvar. And I'm rolling plus heart on this, which is plus two. Look at that! Five on the action die and two twos on the challenge dice for another strong hit. More popular than we thought we were. An opportunity. Well, at least you are. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Alvar is very popular. So <laughs> this is like a terrible class reunion. <laughs> <laughs> so on a strong hit, they'll do what you want or share what they know. Take plus one momentum. Oh, Yay! Geez, momentum. Uh, if you use this exchange to gather information, make that move now and add plus one. I don't think this is about gathering information. I think they're going to help us clear the way to the cave. Yeah, I think I think maybe Elvar, somebody's a guy. My, they're miners, right? The, maybe they have a way that they they know the cave. Everybody knows what that cave is. They yeah. know how to get there, and they know the safe route from the south. And I think Elvar who is not deceptive, but what he is, is personable. And so he, he spins this tale about the wood watch and the, the lost, you know, the last elf that needs our help. And, you know, we are 3% we are, of the people believe you. Yep. But they were totally on board, but they're all whatever like, whatever the game is, they're all like, you know what? This is fine. We can go clear a, a little passageway for you to get to this cave. I'm sure you did this all the time. Back, like for when we were head down time, yeah. like you were always thinking of adventures and the, you know, the forgotten elvish kingdoms and whatnot. You so know, then you're back as an adult, and pretend oh, he's trying to do it. Uh, if for real, if this works out, I may take the storyteller asset uh, because I feel like that is oh, you like a may- Viking, like the the scald yeah. kind of storyteller, like truly epic tale. Yeah. Oh yeah, that'd be perfect. Yep. So I'll keep that in mind for when I eventually get some XP when we finally, <laughs> finally complete. complete this. Quest. <laughs> Wouldn't stop screwing on all these. Uh, so I think. Tracks. So if you want to do your plan, I do. Insert letter that we haven't discovered yet. Uh, this plan C. Plan C. Okay. Um, he just wants. He wants to see if he can slip out Taz and just secure alternate. Like lodging that may be on the edge of the town, just as a backup, like okay. so we're not freezing to death outside. It's cold. Okay. I mean, nothing complex, just kind of like a backup location, whether it's a sleepy inn or a, you know a, a barn or something. 
Does this sound like something that has an inherent danger in it? Sure it does. By myself. Everything has an inherent danger in Frostcrag. Yeah. At this point, with our buddy Keon. I think it's probably just facing danger. Okay. Is going to be this, because it's there's inherent danger. We don't know what that is yet. We'll define it. If, I'm using my wits. I'm and just using wits. To... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, eight uh, challenge die is, are nine and four, so weak. Weak hit. Okay. So you succeed, but you have to lose a momentum, endure harm, endure stress, or suffer a loss to supply. What does endure harm mean? Uh, you take one hit to your health. health. Or the, what are the other options? Endure stress, which mm-hmm. would be one hit to your stress, your spirit. Suffer minus one supply, uh, which we're at two supply. Or you can just lose the momentum. Um, I'm going to suffer stress, because let's say he's followed. Okay. And he has to lose them. Yeah. Cool. So spirit? Yeah. Lose the spirit. Even though that's probably mechanically terrible for me, but... It's okay, though. That's what this is all about. We got resupply, too. Yeah, I think we should... I, I think we have, with the successful compel, we have a path to the cave. We don't have to worry about rolling anything yep. on that. I think so we need to get supply. We can resupply. I come back, breath, like, you know, out of breath. Like, I found out a backup location, but... Yeah, we're being followed. Yeah. You know, Taz is all in a tizzy. And Taz, here's... <laughs> Taz comes in and Alvar is like on a table leading the, the whole tavern in a song. And Taz is just like, oh. I like Elvish gods. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So uh, we are resupplying, mm-hmm. which would be uh, rolling plus wits. Okay. I'll just, this is Taz's job. Yeah. Oh, shit. Is he bad at his job? He's bad as I could use my momentum to actually get a weak hit. So on a weak hit, we would be able to take two supply, but you'd have to suffer momentum loss for each of those. And if you burn your momentum, that would take you to two, which means you would have to suffer down, you know, two momentum. Go to zero. To go to zero. Sure. Or we can just find nothing and pay the price and then, you know, go into this cave with only two supply. That sounds like so much more fun. Let's, let's do <laughs> let's that do then. That. All right. Uh, yeah, because Taz is a little worked up now. Yeah. Elvar had a great evening telling stories. Taz is trying to be the, the responsible planner and uh, is being followed. A little, little edgy now. And because of that... It causes a delay or puts you at a disadvantage. Uh, I feel like the cause of delay is that it takes a while to get all of these like workers and stuff oh. together. And so that just gives people who might have a grudge against us more time to sort of Do marshal something. their forces and you know maybe they follow us into the into cave. cave it leaves open the possibility of okay. danger in the future i like it all right so we are going to first of all mark a box of progress <gasps> on our quest because our vow is to go to the nearby elven site and seek out elven lore to seal off the wood watch which we are now at our second elven site third technically technically yes and so i'm going to mark another progress for that so that we are at five boxes of progress because we've found the cave entrance now we can get to it and i think we're probably going to have to delve this of course we are this cave so let's get to work on that this is this is elvar's territory i think taz has always deferred to elvar when we first enter the elvish site fair this, enough it appears to be our uh, thing right now is uh delving elvish ruins it is so our objective is to find elven lore you know eventually we'll go on this revenge quest eventually where, 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 where it's taz's thing eventually <laughs> Do we want to roll a site name now, or do we want to wait until wait. we're in a little? I don't, I don't think we know where we're at. All right, uh, we really don't. This is this is a, this is also our mo. Yes, it's blindly stumbling into the unknown. So our theme could be ancient, corrupted, fortified, hallowed, haunted, infested, ravaged, Rabbit. or wild. Go for it. Do you want to roll? Of course we do. All right. Can't make any decisions by ourselves. <laughs> 21 corrupted uh, of course it yep. is yep. wasn't the last one we were in corrupted as well mm, one of them was you know it's kind of funny I rolled a 22 just thinking what, and it's a frozen cavern which is perfect frost crag frozen cavern all right so what if frost crag crags actually named after this cavern it probably is I think that makes sense a colloquialism it's probably a mistranslation from something elvish yeah from a long time ago 
Is it troublesome, dangerous, formidable, extreme, or epic? I want to say dangerous. Dangerous at this point. Yeah. I feel like... I know how this game works. It can become worse. I don't want to have to, like, really go for it. I... Uh, should we set up some denizens? We always do, don't we? Yeah, we should. We should establish some. Okay. So, what do we think? I'll just keep rolling. You keep. You keep. Okay. Whatever we're looking at, it's sixty-three. So that's going to be size. It's person sized. Sweet. Um, fifty-nine. It's an insect. <laughs> oh. You. Boy. And person size ice insects. Yeah. G- give us give us <laughs> what? give us a characteristic. Uh forty. Tail. Oh tail. So maybe a stinger of some stinger? sort? Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh giant frost scorpion. Alright. Is it very common? Common. Uncommon. Rare or unforeseen? Uh, rare at least. I don't think these are a common foe. Okay. So we're gonna say giant frost scorpion. Uh, you want to do, you want to do a couple more rolls? Yeah. We'll get another, let's, let's, let's aim for a, a common one here. All right. 21. 21. Small. Um, 34. Spider. Yeah. Yeah. Spiders. Yeah. So frost spider. Yeah. They're all going to be cold themed. Uh, do we want to roll up one more? Yeah. All right. Uh, 72. 72. Large. Giant sized. Yeah. That's great. 87. Ooh, hybrid. <laughs> oh boy. Nice. So that's gonna be fifty-four and nine. So lizard beast. Lizard beast. Could this be like um like salamanders, right? The lizard tail, but you want to kind of and they're big, right? Nine like salamander men? Yeah, like well like they've the um, Naga, kind of like you know okay. like a uh, serpent folk. But they're big, right? They're towering, yeah. kind of like uh yeah. uh is this unforeseen? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to hopefully we don't get there. Should we, should we give uh, like, should we call this something other than serpent folk? Cause I feel like this is not a like species that's in here. This is a like individual. Let's actually, let's give it a name. Oh yeah. Uh, I'm going to go under other names. Let's use the giants. 38 is Kashin. Kashin. Okay, I like that. So Kashin. I like the idea that it's a elemental creature. Yeah, but not water. Like maybe it's like rock. It's like this giant rock serpent thing. Kashin rock serpent. Okay, cool. So we've got a few denizens, and we can always. What was the hybrid? It was a lizard. What? Lizard and beast, and or beast. mammal. I like lizard beast. Lizards have legs, so maybe it's like a more like a. Or like one of those kind of things that has eight legs kind of thing, but it's a giant lizard and it's got nasty claws and teeth and Yeah. I can name, you know, all sorts of mythical creatures that would appropriately describe yeah, it. Exactly. Or something like that. It's a legend. It's nasty. Yeah, it's is, a legend. Is what it is. Cool. So we've got our corrupted frost cavern and we are approaching the edge of this. Human sized scorpions? I'm sorry. Human sized scorpions that are cold based? Yeah. I, right. It's a little scary. I mean, and spiders, man. Poison. Yep. So as Elvar and Taz approach the cave entrance, we are going to delve the depths. Hell yeah. When you traverse an area with a, within a perilous site, envision your surroundings. Ask the oracle if unsure. Then consider your approach. If you navigate this area with haste, roll plus edge. With stealth or trickery, roll plus shadow. Or with observation, intuition, or expertise, roll plus wits. Elvar is definitely leading with wits. Okay. So this is going to be plus two on this. Test is usual. Okay, elf boy. Three on the action die. A two and a ten on the challenge dice for so a weak hit. So roll on the following table according to your stat. So we're going to roll the uh, delve the depths plus wits, mark progress, yes, and reveal a danger. Dun dun dun. So our progress is going to be two ticks. We've marked two progress, but now we have to reveal a danger. Roll percentile dice for us. Twenty-eight. Perfect. 
Taz and Elvar enter the cave and there is a steady decline into the depths of the earth. It's cold down here. There's ice along the walls. Both of them can see their breath as they are walking deeper and deeper. Why is it colder on the inside? It's Frost Crag, after all. I mean, that's the city, not not the cave. Aren't caves supposed to be temperately equal? <laughs> I can't think. The two of them are carrying torches as they are delving deeper and deeper into this cave system. They come to the first cavern in this cave system, and as they emerge into it, they see that there are two passages, one that leads off to the left, one that leads off to the right. There are stalactites hanging from the ceiling that are made purely of ice, and the ground underneath their feet crunches as they walk. As they enter this cavern, the light from their torches plays off of the wall, gleaming with icy sheeting. And in that moment, they hear a on the ice as a pair of frost spiders emerge from behind the stalactites hanging from the ceiling. Ooh. They're small, right? Smallish. Yeah, like dog sized. Dog sized. Dog sized. And we'll find out what happens next time. Thanks for listening to Errant Adventures, and thanks so much to Tabletop Audio for the lovely ambient sounds and music throughout the episode. If you enjoyed the show, please spread the word, and if you want to support the show directly, leave me a review or buy me a coffee at ko-fi.com slash errantadventures. If you want to interact with me, I'm at Errant Solopod on Twitter and Instagram, or you can email me at errantsolopod at gmail.com. I also post campaign-related materials on my website, errantadventurespod.com. Thanks again for listening, and I'll see you next time.